Days emerged that hundreds of DVLA staff were sent home on full pay during the pandemic without having to work at all. Over half of the government's uh, agency staff were at home doing not a lot slash nothing during the first lockdown in April and May 2020, including those that were not ill with COVID. And figures for August 2020 reveal that nearly a thousand DVLA workers remained on special paid leave. This decision to let staff be paid for doing nothing for weeks has left millions of motorists stuck in a backlog of licence applications and renewals. I've got to say, I don't think I made myself clear enough. I'm not sure I repeated the sentence enough during that intro. So just to uh, highlight, in case I wasn't clear, these people were doing nothing. Yes. Have I landed my point? <laughs> nothing. Uh, this special paid leave, this basically applied to people that said that they were vulnerable or that they needed to care for people or whatever. They were just off on full pay while motorists, and cast your mind back, by the way, because we've moved on from this in the media, but let's not forget, we had a massive HGV shortage. We was apparently going to have empty shelves and never be eating anything ever again uh, because we didn't have drivers, etc. Nabila, your thoughts? Well, this, these are the results of a detailed investigation by the Times, and uh, the results do not surprise me at all. I mean, if, if you send thousands of civil servants uh, on full pay, um, you send them home on full pay during a global pandemic, it's quite obvious that many of them are not going to do much work. And it has to be said that most of the uh, administrative work carried out by agencies such as uh, DVLA is by definition very dull and, dare I say, very repeti repetitive. <laughs> so unsupervised workers who are sitting at home are naturally going to be drawn to more, let's say, attractive pursuits. And uh, in the case of the Times investigations, this included uh, watching a lot of television. So it wasn't just a question of staff not working, but they just wasn't enough work being generated because there was nobody uh, in the office to, uh, to, to handle incoming mail, for example. So it just goes to show that, you know, packed workplaces are essential to the smooth uh, running of bureaucracy. And, and, and the sooner everybody um, gets back at work properly, the better, I think. Um, and Daniel, you know, Nabila mentions packed workforces. Uh, and this was one of the problems that the unions had, actually, because they were very insistent on very special um, measures being taken in the offices of the DVLA that meant that, actually, uh, people were not able to be in the office in the numbers that they should have been, I would suggest. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, I normally like to stick up for the government. Uh, I really would like to know when the government found out about this. I mean, did they read it in the Times as well? Um, how, long have they, how long have they known about this and what have they been doing about it? Because, you know, we're well on from this now. And, and if there's still a million, a backlog of a million, who's been dealing with it? Second question is, this was not in line with government guidance. I don't know what the unions dictated, but the government guidance was you, could, you should work from home if you could. And if it was the case that they couldn't work from home, lots of people had computer terminals at home where they could actually work and plug into central systems and carry on working. If that wasn't possible for the DVLA because of the way they work, and I don't understand that, they should have been going into the office and the union should have been face down over this because people were able, lots of people went into offices, offices were well organised so that people could work in them socially distanced, as they said, and that should have been the driving thing behind the management of the DVLA. It does look to me like the management just gave up. Did the government know at the time? When did they discover? Who's responsible for all this and who's carrying the can? Yeah, well, I'll tell you who always carries the can, uh, as per usual. It's us, your everyday person. So there'll be many of you um, that's been desperately waiting for uh, your licence and haven't got it. There's a backlog, by the way, of nearly a million. Uh, and I know that many of you, you often have to send off your passports and things like that. Um, and you will have had, well... Frank, you tell me what you think, actually. I keep telling everyone what I think, and you well, wonderful people are here, too. I think what, what I learned from all this experience is that government guidance is not worth the paper it's written on. And in so many cases, despite government guidance, you know, people just carry on in the same old kind of way. And the problem is not the workers at DVLA. The problem is management. Because I think what you've got is a very slothful management that finds management a bit of a drag, you know, they would rather sort of uh, stay in their digital bedrooms, you know, sort of and mess around than actually give leadership. And we're finding this happening in so many uh, government-related departments in the public sector that it's becoming truly frightening. I mean, it even extends to the foreign office, where something like a third of the, of the members of the foreign office who work there are still 
staying in, 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 uh, in, you know, at home. Uh, so for, for me, the real problem is that we need a, a much more uh, genuine leadership in these areas where people actually lead from the front. I think, the, to me, the biggest tragedy, the biggest problem that this brings about isn't just simply the fact you can't get your license. It's the fact that the government is not in control of its own state. I think when we're learning more and more, there's numerous examples of the last year, is that the government imagines that they're uh, sort of implementing policy, but somewhere along the line, that policy implementation or that direction, those directives, get diffused and, and become completely irrelevant. And the whole kind of machinery just carries on in a very uh, sort of passive kind of a way, which I think represents, you know, not just n not value for money, I think it represents, the, you know, in some ways, uh, giving two fingers to the taxpayer because it's our money that's being wasted. And if the taxpayer is not being serviced with some very essential services. 